here I would like to uh, give a bit of a perspective on the origins of the capillary rise equation. Uh, you don't see this uh, in uh, many books. Uh, capillary rise equation is derived and uh, moving on, but actually there is an interesting story behind this uh, phenomena that uh, is central to the uh, behavior of water in uh, porous media, in unsaturated porous media. So the earliest account for a systematic account for uh, liquid rise in uh, tubes by capillary action is attributed to uh, James Durin, an Englishman, in 1716. And here is a, uh, uh, an image of the cover of these uh, philosophical transactions that gives account of the uh, uh, present undertaking studies and labors of the ingenious in many considerable parts of the world. Uh, you can imagine what was considerable parts of the world at 1716. Durin was puzzled by the prospect of creating a perpetual motion machine using capillarity and quickly discovered a more significant uh, phenomenon of uh, capillary rise. So here is the account of, his, uh, of the challenge that he was facing. And I'll read it for you because it's hard to decipher from this uh, text, the original text. So I'm putting it here to say that some days ago a method was proposed to me by an ingenious friend for making a perpetual motion which seems so plausible and indeed so easily demonstrable from an observation by the late uh, Mr. Hawksby, said to be grounded in an experiment that though I am far from having any opinion of attempts of this nature, that is, attempts to create perpetual motion, yet I confess I could not see why it should not succeed. So he goes on, very candidly he says, but as searches after things impossible in themselves are frequently observed to produce other discoveries unexpected by the inventor. So the, the invention that he um, came to appreciate is the fact that when you dip uh, a capillary in water, water spontaneously rises up and the height of the water rise is inversely proportional to the size of the capillary. In other words, smaller capillaries will re induce larger capillary rise and of course will quantify this. However, uh, Durin was not the first to, uh, to dabble with this uh, question. Mr. Huxby that we heard about uh, played a little bit with uh, droplets of orange oil uh, between glass plates and show that when you open the, the spacing between these glass plates, the droplet will always move to the smaller gap between the plates. And that was kind of a motivation for Durin to pursue his uh, more systematic analysis. In fact, uh, capillary action has been reported earlier by uh, Leonardo da Vinci and his co-workers in the, in the late part of the 17th century. However, formal quantification of the process by defining a contact angle, uh, surface tension, and curved interface had to wait almost 100 years until the work of uh, Thomas Young and Pierre Simon Laplace in 1804 and 1805, respectively, to actually quantify this uh, phenomena. And these are some uh, 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 shots from the original paper by Thomas Young in 1804 and uh, the treatise of uh, celestial mechanics of uh, Simon Laplace uh, that came out in uh, 1805 with the famous Young-Laplace equation down here in which the capillary pressure across a curved interface uh, is simply inversely related to the curvature of the interface and proportional to the surface tension between the two phases, the air and water in our case, but could be other fluids. So the take-home message here is that curiosity drives discovery. Even in the pursuit of perpetual motion as uh, Durin was puzzled and cannot figure out why it shouldn't work, it came out with some discovery. Another lesson to be learned here is that phenomena are not always discovered in one day. So sometimes ideas will mature over time and you can see that uh, Leonardo da Vinci worked on it and uh, uh, Louis Carré, uh, a Frenchman, in 1704 worked on it and later on uh, um, Durin was able to formulate this uh, phenomena quite uh, uh, phenomenologically, quite exactly, but not quantitatively. And he was, uh, strangely enough, was uh, driven by these uh, prospects of uh, creating a capillary perpetual motion, perpetual motion uh, machine that, of course, didn't work. 
So uh, the, the ideas need to mature until different perspectives are all integrated into concept. Still, before I finish, I need to ask you to uh, reflect a little bit about why perpetual motion cannot be achieved using capillarity.